Oh, but I believe tonight there's breakthrough in the anointing. There's breakthrough in the glory. There's breakthrough in the glory of God. You know, you know the type of breakthrough I'm talking about? It's like when the children of Israel marched around the walls of Jericho and gave a great shout, and the walls came down. And when I was in Bible school, you know, they, we, we did a, a study on this. And I remember archaeology, they, they discovered the walls of Jericho, if you've ever studied this out. And, you know, the walls didn't crumble down. It was like they found the walls underneath the ground as if an invisible hand pushed them straight down into the ground. Come on now. So that's the kind of breakthrough I'm talking about, where it's not just a crumbling down, but it's like every wall that the enemy has tried to forge around you, the hand of God comes and flats it right, flattens it right down, bringing freedom and breakthrough and annihilates every work of the enemy. The Son of God was manifested to destroy the works of the evil one, to destroy every work that the enemy has ever tried to do against you. And this is how big God is. He is so big and so powerful that every single assignment the enemy has tried to set against you, God is boomeranging that thing back on the enemy. Yes. Boomerang. Boomeranging it back on him, making him regret ever trying to mess with you. Because one thing I've discovered is that the area of your greatest struggle becomes the area of your greatest anointing. Yeah, so we started this morning by saying, be glad then, you children of Zion. So I'm saying tonight, be glad then, because every struggle you've had, even if you've come into this meeting tonight with a present struggle, that struggle does not disqualify you. God is about to show himself strong in your weakness. And when God manifests his strength in your weakness... The devil's going to be on the run. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place tonight. Whoa, you are welcome in this place tonight. Do what you want to do, God. Whatever is in your heart for tonight, Lord, we say, come Holy Spirit and have your way. Let a fresh infusion of divine power come into us tonight that we would not be the same, God. Whenever we encounter you, Lord, we are never the same. I believe there's lightning rods in this room tonight. I believe God has called people in this room to be walking lightning rods. You know what a lightning rod does? A lightning rod attracts lightning. That's what a lightning rod does. You are designed by God to attract heavenly lightning. Today, I began to see in the spirit as we began to minister around the altar, and there was such a weight of the cloud of God that came down over the altar here, I began to see his anointing going forth like lightning. And I believe that God wants to make you a lightning rod to break open things in the spirit that wherever you go, breakthrough happens. That you understand how to break atmospheres open. You understand how to become a walking, living lightning rod that connects with high voltage power. That causes atmospheres to shift and change. The Bible says we're in this world, but we're not of this world, which means there's an atmosphere of this world. But the good news is you don't have to come under that atmosphere. You get to establish the atmosphere of the kingdom of God. You never have to just submit yourself to a negative atmosphere around you. In fact, every morning, I want to encourage you with something. Every morning when you wake up in the morning, learn to begin to command your atmosphere. Learn to begin to command your day in the spirit. When you wake up, don't just go with the flow and whatever happens, happens. No, even if you just take a few minutes and you begin to prophesy over your day, and you say, in the name of Jesus Christ, I decree, I thank you that today, God, my steps are ordered by you. I thank you that you're going before me. You're clearing out the adversary. You're, you're clearing out the obstacles. I thank you that today you're... Your anointing is going before me, God. I thank you that today I am blessed and highly favored. I thank you something good is going to happen today. You begin to prophesy and command the atmosphere of your day. And I'm telling you, it clears things out before you ever even get there. And it causes divine order to come into your day. Just a simple one-minute decree like that can move things in the spirit. Come on, church, we got to learn not to be passive. we got to learn to be on the aggressive when it comes to the things of the Spirit. Oh, hallelujah. Come on now, you can command the atmosphere of your home. You know that? You can have the glory of God not just in you, but in your home. So that when people come into your home, they get saved and healed. 
When people come into your home, they get delivered. When they come in, the demons go out. I believe that. I do that in our house. In our house with seven, I will walk around our home, and I will just release the presence of God in our home. I'll go from room to room, and I'll worship. I will just walk around our home. When I'm not on the road traveling, and I'm having prayer time in my house, I'll just walk around my house, worshiping Jesus, playing worship music in the house, and it will establish a heavenly atmosphere in my home because I don't just want the glory in church. I want the glory when I'm home. I want the glory in my marriage. I want the glory where, where I live day by day. I want the glory in my children. I want the glory there. So I will, I will proactively set the atmosphere. And you know, Stephanie's parents and sister came two weeks ago, and they spent two weeks with us. They, they head out tomorrow. Uh, when I head home on Tuesday, they head back up to Canada. But you know, they've stayed in our home for two weeks. And what they keep saying to us is, there's so much peace in your home. There's so much, it's so restful in your home. It's because they come under our atmosphere. Come on now. They come into our zone, they come under our atmosphere, and they come under the peace of God, the joy of God, and the rest of God. Because that's what's in the glory. How many want your home saturated with the glory? How many want your marriage saturated with glory? Or you want your children saturated with the glory? Or you, you just want the atmosphere of your home saturated with God? I love the scripture in Micah. Micah chapter 2 verse 13 says the breaker with a capital B and the breaker is the Messiah. The breaker will go up before them and they will break through. Pass in through the gate and go out through it and their king will pass on before them the Lord at their head. The breaker will go up before them and they will break through. You know why we get to break through tonight? Because the breaker has gone before us. And what the Lord has shown me is that there is no self-striving in breakthrough. There's no self-striving in breakthrough. When you get the revelation of what the breaker has done for you, you get to enter into a position of rest where you step into the breakthrough that has already been accomplished by Jesus Christ. The breaker has gone before you. You get to break through. When Jesus died on the cross, he said, it's finished. Stripped the enemy of his power and authority. Made an open show of him. Defeated sin. Defeated sickness. Defeated darkness. The breaker broke through. Now we get to enter into breakthrough. How many ready to enter into full, the fullness of breakthrough? How many ready for the fullness of breakthrough? Yeah, the fullness of it. It's not by self-striving. It's by revelation. It's by understanding what Jesus has done for us that we could then step into that realm of breakthrough. That realm of breakthrough where you do become a walking lightning rod. And I'm prophesying over this room tonight. There are lightning rods in this room. When you're a lightning rod in the spirit, you help break atmospheres open. Even for corporate worship meetings, there's always one. There's always at least one lightning rod in the room that will help break the spirit open for everyone else. You see, but what will happen if there's five or 10 or 20 or 30 or 50 lightning rods in a room? I mean, what will happen when everyone in the church becomes a lightning rod? When everyone knows how to get a hold of the presence, how to, how to get a hold of the glory and break atmospheres open for the Holy Spirit? Oh, hallelujah. There is something called the lightning of God. You know, the power of God is like raw electricity. It is. My mom experienced that when she got saved and healed. That's how we came into the kingdom of God. And for those that don't know it, I got saved when I was 14 years old, and it was the result of a miracle healing that my mom got in a Catholic church. Yeah. Yeah where the priests were filled with the Holy Spirit. And my mom had gotten so sick, she was on 24 bottles of medicine a day. She was bedridden at the end of two years. She had spent thousands of dollars on hospital bills. The doctors diagnosed her with MS, with tumors, with a blood disorder. They just kept diagnosing her with different things and giving her more medication and nothing worked. Until one night, she found herself in a Catholic healing mass. They didn't even have a worship team. It was, just, it, was a, it was just like a regular mass. 
But they were praying for the sick at the end. And my mom was so sick that night, she collapsed on the floor in the back of the church. And she just laid it on the floor in the back. And by the time they were doing prayer at the front, she dragged her body down to the front. And before the priest could even put his hand on her, God put his hand on her. And when I talk about the lightnings of God, I'm talking about a raw lightning bolt from heaven shot through her body and threw her 10 feet through the air. And she couldn't stand. She, there was no catchers, nothing. And she went flying back with raw power surging through every cell of her body. And by the time she got off the floor, she was saved, healed, and set free. She got the full gospel in one zap of the lightning of God. I mean, in that moment of encounter, look, she had a very humanistic mindset. She was very loving and merciful, and she believed that all roads led to God, that if, if you were sincere in your religion, that it would still lead you to God. And she just believed no matter what religion you were, you would find God. But in that moment of encounter under the glory, she got a personal one-on-one -on -one revelation from God himself that Jesus Christ was the only way to get to God. And as she got that revelation, she got saved, healed, and set free. And by the time she got off the floor, she was a transformed person. That's what the lightnings of God will do. When you have that raw encounter with the living God, that week my whole family got saved. Praise the Lord. We need more of the power of God in the church. This is Pentecost Sunday. Guys, we need more of the power of God in the church. It is not the will of God that people come in and out of church for 20 years with the same stuff. There should be so much of the glory that when people come in, stuff goes out. They get healed. They get saved. They get set free. They're not left to struggle on their own. But there's, there's the power of the Holy Spirit. How many want the power of the Holy Spirit in your life, in your family? To flow in you and to flow through you. The glorious power of God. I remember 15, 16 years ago when I very first started going to India. And we started doing mass miracle crusades. I remember the very first miracle crusade I ever did. I had never done a miracle crusade before and it was my first one. And the, the field was full of Hindus and Muslims and Buddhists. They all came out. And my coordinator, who was running the crusade, brought all of the television cameras from the different television, you know, lines in, in the region. And the cameras were there filming it. And there was a phone number on the bottom of the screen for call in prayer. And I wondered why the whole crusade, the pastor was behind me on his cell phone the whole time. And I'm thinking, why is he on his cell phone the whole time I'm preaching? It's because it was his phone number on the bottom of the TV screen. And as people were watching, they were calling him, and he's answering the phone on the platform right behind me, praying for people over the airwaves. And people were getting healed watching from their homes. And I remember that night, I remember that night declaring the name of Jesus over that crusade field. Can I just tell you, if the only thing you know is the name of Jesus, it's enough. I mean, if you know the power of the name of Jesus and the power of the blood of Jesus, that is enough to see people saved, healed, and set free. I'm telling you, it doesn't have to be complicated. We just began to speak the name of Jesus over those people. And as I began to speak the name of Jesus, I'm going to tell you what happened that night. There was a Hindu woman way at the back of the field. She had snuck in with her two daughters. She didn't want her, her family to know that she was there because she was of the high caste system. She was more of the wealthy caste system and she would be, you know, kicked out or excommunicated from her home if they knew she was coming to a Christian event. So she was way in the back. But as we began to speak the name of Jesus... This is what I found out a little bit later that night. As the name of Jesus went forth, the lightnings of God were released over the crusade field. And she saw a flash of light around her. And as she saw this flash of light, you see, she was there with a broken leg because every night a demon would visit her and thrash her body on the floor, breaking her leg. And as this flash of light shone around her, her leg was instantly healed. And the demon that had tormented her left her body. 
Come on now. Her one daughter who was going mentally insane, her mind came right back into soundness. And then the other daughter who was losing her eyesight, her vision instantly opened. While they were still Hindu. They had not been saved yet. They were just hearing the name of Jesus. God's power was encountering them, healing them, and setting them free. Can I tell you, when we gave the altar call for salvation, one way to God, Jesus Christ, they were the first ones up to that altar. They were the first ones up to that altar. She came up onto the platform testifying of what she had encountered in the back. And she, she was saved five minutes, and she's preaching the gospel to this whole crowd of Hindus. She's saying, I have worshipped millions of Hindu gods my whole life. None of them could do for me what Jesus Christ has done for me tonight. Jesus is the way. And she began to preach Jesus as the way to God. As a brand, brand new Christian. Look, if you know the name of Je church, we have to get a fresh revelation of the power that is in the name of Jesus and the power that is in the blood of Jesus. And that newly saved woman was preaching the gospel to her people right there. The lightnings of God. That's what happens when the lightnings of God are released.